hunt for different reasons, but it's more than just the kill. First off, I'm grateful to be an American, to live in a country that still has country like this. Wide open, wild stuff, and I love it. It's about the experience, freedom, passion, and adventure. For me, hunting is the ultimate pursuit. We need to get out of here. This is danger zone. Who was the big bear? A connection with nature that only a hunter can experience. I've spent my entire life perfecting my skills, braving the elements in pursuit of my prey. The wild is where I belong. I'm Keith Warren, and like you, I live for the hunt. Join me and take the high road. Hundreds of years ago, giant herds of Cape Buffalo roamed the African plains. But when the farmers and ranchers settled here, those giant herds disappeared. But today, thanks to the efforts of private landowners, the future for Cape Buffalo in South Africa is bright. Just like the future for big game species all over the world is bright because of conservation efforts. On today's show, we're gonna be talking about conservation and saving species for the future. And we call it conservation through commerce. Conservation through commerce is the idea that the best way to preserve and protect wildlife and their habitat is giving them an economic value. And on this episode, we're looking at two prime examples. First, we'll be with my friends at Hunter's Hill Safaris in the Eastern Cape of South Africa. And then we'll head to my home state of Texas with the incredible Bisbee's Fish and Wildlife Conservation Fund. This is the Eastern Cape of South Africa, and we are currently on private property that's owned by a friend of mine. His name is Greg Harvey. Greg and Bruce Nyland are partners in a company called Hunter's Hill Safaris, and I've hunted on this property many, many times. Now on this particular property, there are over 80 different species of animals. And that's important for people to realize that those 80 different species of animals, all of them have a bright future thanks to the efforts of Bruce Nyland and Greg Harvey. My name's Greg Harvey. I'm the owner of Hunter's Hill Safaris. And we're currently busy relocating a, a group of buffalo to establish in one of our new properties called Ukutulu. And the whole aim of, of reintroducing them there obviously is to increase our number and increase the, the breeding capabilities of our herd in order to improve our genetic pool of our buffalo. It is a cold morning. It's, uh, it got down to freezing last night. We got some frost on the ground, but there's a lot to do today. We've got a lot of people around here and everybody's got a purpose for being here. You'll notice there's a veterinarian. He's working right now in the back of the truck. He is loading darts uh, with a sedative drug. You'll notice on the darts, they've got a little prong on them. What we're gonna be doing, he's gonna be using this rifle. It's a dart gun or a projector made by New Dart. And he's gonna load these darts into that projector. Once he winds up getting above these animals, he's going to shoot these animals, each one of them with one of these darts. And that prong is gonna allow that dart to stay in the animal. That way, what they wanna be able to do, because there's gonna be so many they're gonna be knocking down, they need to be able to determine which one that they've hit already. And that's just the beginning. Montelay, Monty, come here. You may wonder what this is. This is a, a heater over here. It's pretty cold, huh? Yes. Yeah, but that's pretty nice right there. So they're sharing the heater back over here. <laughs> what these guys are going to be doing later on, as soon as these buffalo hit the deck, this is the manpower right here to pick them up on stretchers and bring them in here. Cape buffalo, they're also known as Black Death, and they're one of the most feared animals on the planet.
with Keith Warren is presented by Rickonics. Record Rack Deer and Elk Feed. Burt Coyotes Luminoc. Supercharged Scent Killer by Wildlife Research Center, 99%. Ion Cameras. Tannerite. And Bloodsport. The High Road will be right back. Back in the 1800s, this land right here, it had elephant, buffalo, rhino that roamed all over. But due to settlement uh, from farmers, they came through here and, and I mean, just like everywhere else, they destroyed habitat, which destroyed uh, places for the animals to live. And what they wound up doing, they hunted the animals down, killed them for meat and for sport to the population was almost extinct and, and they didn't even live here anymore. Those species survived in other countries, so there's conservation efforts being made now to bring those species back here, and I think that's a pretty cool deal. We're in the Eastern Cape of South Africa, watching conservation in action. They're going to great lengths to keep Cape Buffalo populations healthy. By relocating Cape Buffalo to a new property, they help grow their numbers and ensure good genetics within the herd. Right now, the helicopter is hovering over the herd of buffalo, trying to find the right one to put a dart in. It takes about seven to eight minutes for the buffalo to go down and the drug to take effect. And at that point, they run out there in the pickup trucks. Each pickup truck has a stretcher in the back of it, and a team of guys, because these buffalo weigh upwards of 2,000 pounds. So what they're doing, they're waiting for the buffalo to go down, driving the trucks out to them, taking the stretchers out, loading them on the stretchers, and then bringing them to this corral here. This is a six to seven year old cow right here, fixing to go to sleep. She's almost out of it. And uh, the reason why they know exactly how old it is, because Greg bought this from another breeder. And the reason why he buys them and these breeders deal with each other is because they're going to cross the genetics. They want to bring in new genetics into a gene pool to get the best quality animals possible. It's just like whether you're growing white-tailed deer or Cape buffalo. It's all about good genetics. Buff is very difficult in South Africa. To move from one property to another, we have to do numerous tests and send blood away to our veterinary control center in the country. And once all the results have come back clear, then we may move them from one property to another with the state vet being present in the whole movement. So that's what we're currently doing. Now there's a couple of buffalo that were knocked down for medical purposes. They needed some treatment and they're cows, so what they've done, they've gone ahead and they've painted their horns blue so they've identified which animals they are, so that way when they wake up and join the herd again, they won't put another dart in them. Right now, it's chaos. It's organized chaos, but it's a good thing. Everybody knows what everybody else is doing, and the important part right now is taking care of the buffalo. Every one of these buffalo has an ear tag with a number on it. That way they can keep track of each animal and where it goes. The main aim of reintroducing the buffalo there is, is really for conservation and obviously um, for financial reasons. Buffalo have become worth a lot of money, whereas diseased buffalo are worth about 10% of the value of, of a disease-free buffalo. So the, the real point is to conserve and to grow the numbers of disease-free buffalo. So ultimately, in the long run, maybe 50 years or whenever from now, our, our buffalo as a country could become a disease-free status buffalo. Conservation efforts like this are being funded by hunters, sportsmen, and private landowners. And uh, there's a, a saying out there, conservation through commerce. And I think it's really important for everybody that's watching this video to understand what that means. 
Uh, if these animals had no value, they would not be here. And thank God that hunters and private landowners place a huge value on these animals, that they put their hard-earned dollars and blood, sweat, and tears into making sure that all these species of animals are gonna be around long after we're gone. Stay with us as we head to my home state of Texas and join the incredible folks with the Bisbee's Fish and Wildlife Conservation Fund on a very unique type of hunt. The High Road with Keith Warren is presented by Armasite, the entire line of Food Saver Game Saver vacuum sealing systems, BSA Optics, Gamo Adult Precision Air Rifles, and FreedomMunitions.com, your online ammunition destination. The High Road will be right back.